Hi there. This section deals with estimating area below the graph of a curve. And I'd like to start out by jumping right into an example with you. Here we have, um, as we will with all these problems, we have some function that defines what will be a top boundary of a region. We have an interval which will define the left and right edges of the region. And then it's uh, implied that the bottom of the region will be formed by the x-axis. That is assuming that our y values are positive in the, uh, for the given function. A good place to start with these type problems is to go ahead and graph, uh, graph the, the curve over the region. If I'm going to graph this equation, I know that's a line. It's in slope-intercept form after all. I'm going to plot a point at 0, 1. And I'm going to count off a slope of 1 half, which means up 1 over 2. And I'm going to continue that pattern in either direction. So I can draw eventually my line right there. I'm also going to draw vertical lines where x is 0 and where x is 3, as dictated by the interval we're given. And then the bottom of the region is going to be formed by the axis. Let's draw that line in there. And we have our resulting region right in here. And it just so happens this region is a shape. It's a geometric shape. There's a name for it. It's called, it's called a, a trapezoid. And we have a formula for finding area of a trapezoid. So we really don't even need to, need to make an estimate for this. We can just figure out the exact answer. Area of a trapezoid, I like to think of that as the base times the average height, as opposed to a rectangle, which is just base times height, because the base never, or the, the height never changes on a rectangle. What I mean by average height is take the shortest possible height, which in this case is 1, take the longest possible height, which in this case is, uh, let's see, the function goes through 3, 2 and a half. So the height of the highest function is 2.5, and then the base is uh, 3 units wide. So the area, base 3, average height, so that's uh, average is adding up two things and dividing by two. 1 plus 2.5 is 3.5. 3.5 is 7 halves. And then when we divide by 2, we are really multiplying by a half. So we really have 3 times 7 fourths, which is 21 fourths, or 5 and a fourth square units. That's an exact answer. Most of these problems will be estimates because most of them will not form polygons. Polygons have sides made of line segments. All four sides on that previous example were line segments. And areas of polygons can be calculated quite easily using geometric formulas, such as base height divided by 2, or base height, or um, base times average height. Now in reality, most of the time we're going to have functions that describe curves. And those will be the tops of these regions. And, and those areas are more difficult to calculate. It's, it's hard to, you know, in geometry you never talked about how to calculate area of a parabola. The next best thing, as opposed to getting exact areas from particular formulas is estimating the area below a curve using a polygon or a series of polygons, such as rectangles or trapezoids. Our next example, there is a function with a, a top piece that's not a line, but instead a parabola. If you look, there's a an x squared term is the highest power. And uh, not only that, but it'll, it'll be a parabola that opens down because of the negative value in front of the x squared term. So let's just let's, like, let's get a sketch of this thing. We know it's a downward opening parabola. Honestly, I'm not going to get too fancy with it. I'm, I'm not ashamed to just plug in a couple points really quickly. 0 to 2 is not a very, wi not a very wide interval 
f of 0 we can tell is going to be 6. f of 1 is going to be 5. And f of 2 is going to be 6 minus 4, which is 2. If we plot these, over the interval 0 to 2, we get uh, there's our part of our parabola. I'm going to draw in vertical lines on x equals 0 and x equals 2, and I'm also going to bound the region below by the x-axis. So we have this uh, kind of top-down view of uh, a baby grand piano, maybe. So now we've got to draw some rectangles in on this diagram. Uh, a good question to ask yourself would be, uh, what should the width of one of these rectangles be? Well, for simplicity's sake, we can, we can make each of the four rectangles the same width. So we're going to split up this interval. We're going to partition, they say, partition this interval of, of two units. It's, it's two units wide from 0 to 2 using four rectangles. Do the math on that. Take the width of your interval, divide it by the number of rectangles. B minus A, or 2 minus 0 in our case, would be the width of the interval. And then using N is sort of the standard uh, means of, of showing a number of rectangles in these problems. So for our case, B minus A becomes 2 minus 0. That's the width of the interval. Divided by 4, that's the number of rectangles. 2 fourths would be a half. So since we're going to use rectangles that are of equal width, we're going to want each rectangle to be a half a unit wide. I'm going to draw in those borders right now. So we're going to start when x is 0 and then stop when x is a half. There's our first rectangle width. If I want to draw in that rectangle, I could start, if I start when uh, x is 0, I'm going to follow the, the path up to the, the graph and I'm going to use the graph to dictate the height of the rectangle. Now my rectangle is going to kind of overhang outside the, uh, the, boundary, the border, but that's why it's an estimate, not an exact answer. The next rectangle is going to pick up right where that left off when x is a half, and it's going to have a height of the function when x is a half, so it'll stick outside the region. And the next rectangle picks up when x is 1. Its height will be dictated by the graph when x is 1. And our fourth and final rectangle will pick up where it left off. It will have a height of one and a, uh, f of 1 and a half and look something like that. All right, so now we've got to figure out the, the total area of these four rectangles combined. And we'll use that answer as the result for our estimate for the curve. The area of the first rectangle is going to be base times height. And the base of this, and, and frankly all the rectangles in this problem, is a half. That's how wide each one is. The height is going to be the same as the function height when x, <coughs> when x is 0. So we call that f of 0. f of 0, we know, is 6. So the area of the first rectangle would be 3. The area of the second rectangle well, its base is also one half unit wide. And the height, however, is going to be the same as the function height when x is a half. So to convert that one half x value into a y value, into a, an actual height, we need to plug one half into the function. Now, I don't know what f of a half is off the top of my head, so let's go back to the function. 6 minus 1 half squared would be 6 minus 1 fourth which would be 5 and 3 fourths. Oh, brother. Um, 5 and 3 fourths is uh, 23 fourths. So in the end, we're going to have 23 eighths for the area of that second rectangle. For our third rectangle, its base is a half. Its height will be dictated by the function when x is 1 f of 1, we already know, is 5. So the area of that third rectangle will be 5 halves. 
So we've got three 23 eighths and five halves with one rectangle to go. The fourth rectangle, base is a half, the height would be the function height when x is one and a half. So I have to plug three halves, I'll use three halves, it's easier to work with, than one and a half. I have to plug three halves into this function, six minus three halves squared is six minus nine fourths. Six is 24 fourths, take away nine fourths. So we're really looking at a half of 24 minus nine is 15 fourths, which will be 15 eighths. So the, the approximate area for this region will just be the sum of these four rectangles. And I'm gonna write, since we've got eighths and halves and whole numbers, I'm gonna use a common denominator here of, of uh, eight. Three is 24 eighths. We have 23 eighths. Five halves is um, 20 eighths and 15 eighths. If we add all these up, the area is gonna be, um, oh gosh, 24, 20, Oops, 23, I forgot that one, and 15 eighths. We get 82 eighths, which is um, 10 and a quarter. 10 and a quarter square units about would be the area of this region. Now, obviously that's an estimate. Specifically, they call this, this estimate a left endpoint rectangle estimate because the heights of the rectangles were dictated at the left hand side. If the first, the first rectangle started when x was zero and ended when x was a half. And we could have used either one of those to figure out an estimate for the height. And in fact, we chose the left of those numbers, the zero. That's what we call a left endpoint rectangle. The rectangles also extended outside the area bound by the actual function. Uh, those type rectangles are called circumscribed. And because there was overhang, because the part of the rec there was part of the rectangles outside the, um, the region, we got an overestimate known as an upper sum. What I mean by all this, going back to the problem, of overhang outside the region here and here and here and here because of that overhang we call these that's what makes these circumscribed and um, that, that gives us an upper sum or a, an approximation that is greater than the actual area of the region let's do the same problem this time using right endpoint rectangles I'm gonna redraw this region and I'm going to put my four rectangles in again. This time though, I'm going to skip, I'm not gonna draw a height of f of zero. I'm gonna, my first height is going to be evaluated on the right side of this first rectangle when x is a half. So I'm gonna go up to the region here and then cut over and bring my rectangle down the left side. My next rectangle will have a height equal to the graph when x is one. My third rectangle will have a height equal to the graph when x is one and a half, and my fourth rectangle will have a height equal to the graph when x is two. The area of my first rectangle, we've done this before. We did this in the last problem. So we need f of a half. We got 23 eighths when we did the calculation. The area of the second rectangle would be half of f at 1. And we know from the last problem that that was, I'm going to call it 20 eighths. I just have a feeling I'm going to need this in eighths again. The third rectangle will have an area of a half times f of 3 halves. We've made this calculation before. It was the 15 eighths in the last problem. And some new information, the fourth rectangle will have an area equal to one half f of two. 
Well, if f of 2 is 2, 1 half of that will be 1, or 8 eighths. So the area this time, when I add all these up, I get 23, 43, 58, 66 um, eighths. 8 goes into 66 8 times with 2 eighths left over, or 1 fourth. So I get 8 and a fourth for my area approximation using right endpoint rectangles. There you go. The rectangles in this example are considered right, right endpoint rectangles because their heights are determined at the right hand side. The rectangles stay within the area bound by the actual function. So these rectangles are inscribed as opposed to circumscribed. And our area estimate is an underestimate or a lower sum. And of course, what I mean by all that is that there is excess space between our approximating rectangles and the actual boundary of the region. There, that's what I mean by lower sum. Our approximation is too low because there's, there's gaps that aren't being accounted for in our rectangles area. All right, so we've, we've, we've seen the approximation in action here. What could we do to get more accurate results on that last problem? One thing, could use more rectangles. As you use more rectangles, the space that isn't accounted for becomes more and more filled in. Uh, if you, the thinner your rectangles, the less clumsy they are. They fit better, they fit tighter, and, and this dead space will be less and less each time. So using more rectangles is one area to get more accurate estimates. Because there's less gap on inscribed and less overhang on circumscribed rectangles. So what would we have to do to get an exact answer? Well, theoretically, if more rectangles equals more accuracy, an exact answer, which is perfect accuracy, means you'd have to use a whole ton of rectangles. Specifically, you'd have to use infinite rectangles. And that's where we're approaching in, in, this, in this section or in this chapter. We won't get there today, but we'll get there soon. In this example, we won't have to actually come up with a number answer. They're just asking us to write two different expressions using a sigma, so, so summation notation, to show um, area under this curve for this interval using these things. I'm going to start by sketching this graph. If I plug in, uh, let's see, I'm going to plug in 1, and that'll give me, that'll give me 3 fourths. I'm going to plug in 2, that'll give me 1. I'm going to plug in 3, that'll give me 1 and a fourth. Ooh, I should have made my graph wider. I'm going to plug in 4. That'll give me 3. Just to wing it a little bit. There is the region. So if I'm going to use left endpoint rectangles, well, I guess specifically if I'm going to use 5 of them, the width or the base of each rectangle would have to be, I'm covering, let's see, B minus A is three units of width using five rectangles. So each rectangle would have to be three-fifths of a unit wide. Now I can just pull that three-fifths out as a constant because as we saw in the last problems, you, every single area calculation is going to have that width built into it. You could have just as easily factored the one-half out and just added up all the heights. Um, that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to factor that 3 fifths out. I'm going to call this area sub L. So area of the uh, left endpoints is 3 fifths. 
I'm going to pull that out front as a constant, and then I'm going to have to add up a whole bunch of stuff. That's where the sigma comes in. The things I'm going to add up are the heights of the rectangles, right? So uh, the heights of the rectangles come from evaluating the function y at certain x values. So I'm going to take y of whatever. I'm going to take y of, let's see, using a left endpoint rectangle, the first thing I'm going to plug in is 1. So I'm just going to leave this as y sub 1 being the first height I need to find. The next height will be one rectangle with the way at one and three fifths. So I am going to have to add three fifths, and in fact, I'm going to have to do that each time. I'm going to have to add three fifths here, add three fifths here, add three fifths here, and then add three fifths to get to the end. There's my one, two, three, four, five rectangles. The point is, I have to add 3 fifths each jump. So this 3 fifths needs to get multiplied by i, and that will automatically allow us to start with 1 and add 3 fifths each time. So this is my height, or I'm sorry, this is my width of a rectangle, it's 3 fifths. This is my height of each rectangle, and this means add up all those heights. Now, the only thing I have left to do is to tell it when do I need to start and when do I need to stop. And let's, let's test this. I want my first x value to be 1. Because I'm starting with a left endpoint rectangle, I better darn well start with 1 because that's on the left side of the interval. So, to make sure that I do, I'm going to, I got to ask myself, well, if I'm starting with y of 1, I don't want this 3 fifths here because that'll screw it up from being 1. I want it to be 1 plus 0, which is easy to do. All you have to do is make the i value for the first input be 0. Test it. Plug in 0, you get 1 plus 0, that's y of 1, that's good because that's where my left endpoint is. So this is what you get when you plug in 0, this is what you get when you plug in 1, this is what you get when you plug in 2, 3, 4, and then that's it. This is my last rectangle. So 4 is where I want to stop. When I plug in 4, I should be at, uh, what is this, 3 and 2 fifths. I don't care about this rectangle height because it is not a left endpoint rectangle. The last rectangle that's a left endpoint one is the one here at 3 and 2 fifths. To verify that I get 3 and 2 fifths, I can plug 4 in for i. That'll give me 1 plus 12 fifths, which is 17 fifths, which is 3 and 2 fifths. That's perfect. So that is the expression for my left endpoint rectangle so, uh, approximation. Now we need to do this for the right endpoint rectangles. The width of each rectangle will still be 3 fifths. It's just that now I don't want to start right away when y is 1. Uh, so my area is going to be 3 fifths on the outside. That's still my constant width. And I'm now going to have y of, um, well, I don't know. I don't want to start at 1, so there's a couple ways to tackle this. I'm going to leave this as 1 plus 3 fifths i. Because the interval still starts at 1, still jumps by 3 fifths each time. The thing is, I don't want to, if I, I don't want to plug in 0 this time. So if I plug in 0 for i, I'll get 1 plus 0, which is 1. I don't want to evaluate a height of a rectangle of 1. I want my first rectangle to be at 1 and 3 fifths. So that means I need to start one rectangle width into the interval. In order to start one rectangle width into the interval, I'm going to start with i equaling 1. Plug it in. Check it out. 1 plus 3 fifths times 1 is 1 plus 3 fifths is 1 and 3 fifths. That would be what I get when I plug in my first number. That's good because that is the height of the first rectangle. So plug in 1, you get that. Plug in 2, you get that. Plug in 3, you get that. Plug in 4, you get that. Plug in 5, and you get that rectangle, which is perfect. That is where the interval ends.
Well, we've just looked at a couple examples that, um, that deal with two of the four different ways the AP test might ask you to find an approximation for an area. The first way is with left endpoint rectangles, and the second way is with right endpoint rectangles. Another method that you might see used, and I won't get into it on this video, but I can, you know, I can summarize it, is a midpoint rectangle. So for a midpoint rectangle, instead of using just the left side or just the right side, you average out the values. You find the middle of that region, and you plug that into the function to get the rectangle's height. So there you're averaging out the x values on a midpoint rectangle. You do that before you plug in that value into, in to get the height. Another and final method you might need to use is a trapezoidal method. For this method, you plug in both the left and right x values first. You get two different results for the height, and you average out the heights. So in midpoint, you average out the x values, and then you plug it in. Whereas in trapezoids, you plug in first right away and average out the results. We will look at examples of all of these more and more as we go on throughout the year.